What's up, everybody? This is Carolina Mike, your host for SharePoint in 60 Seconds. Hope everyone's doing great today. Uh, this is one of the first shows, and uh, welcome aboard. Uh, as you can tell, yes, that was my microphone. That's all good. Give me one sec here. There we go. A little technical difficulties. Hope you can hear me well. Again, thank you. This is Carolina Mike, your host of SharePoint in 60 Seconds. If you're seeing this, this is a live stream about SharePoint. I love music. I love roller skating. I love SharePoint. And so this is my opportunity to give back to each of those communities if you happen to have a SharePoint question. So please visit on YouTube. We are live streaming on Twitch. We are also live on Facebook. Wherever you're watching, please hop into the comments and we will do our best to answer any questions you have. Uh, if I know the answer, I'll do my best to share it with you, give you some options. And if I cannot handle it, then we will refer you to the proper source so that you can get the answer that you need. That's the, the overall idea. Alrighty. Give me one moment and I'm going to make sure I can see all of your uh, all of your chats. Do not want to miss anything here. All righty. All righty. All right. We will handle that in a moment. Go ahead and send in your questions, anything you want to know, to SharePoint in 60 seconds at gmail.com. You can also reply to any video. Let's get right into it. Today's topic. Today's topic is how to hide columns from your end users. Everybody at some point wants to hide a column from an end user in a SharePoint list or document library. It used to be kind of a bear to do. It's super easy. So one of the things I like to do is give you that rundown in 60 seconds. And then if that's all you need, great, you got it. We'll see you next time. Otherwise, if you want to stick around and see all the gory details, basically see how the sausage is made, then I will take you step by step as best I can through that process. So here we go. All you got to do, well, first I'll show, I'll tell you, and then I'll show you. All you got to do is go into the list, act as if you're firing off a new item. From there, you're going to be able to access an edit menu that will allow you to edit the form. From there, you go in and you select or deselect any field that you do not, or well, if you select it, it will, if deselect it won't, um, and it will or will not show on the data entry form, on the list form. So there you go. Now, if you want to stick around for the details, I will show you some of those gotchas and things to watch out for as we demo it live. Let's rock and roll. Where shall we go? Where shall we begin? I think there is a song catalog. Let's look at the song catalog. Now, I do have a title field here. Some people enjoy using it. My suggestion is use, if you can use the title field for a brand new list, use it. Now, there are some updates coming uh, with Microsoft Lists, but you know, I'm I'm old school, like from the ground up at the bare bones, bare bones at the list level without any fancy coverings, you're going to get a title column. It's going to be required, I do believe. Um, if you can use it, use it. It will just make life a lot easier. And if I remember before the end, I'm going to share 
a super secret tip with you that's going to really help you uh, when it comes to naming your columns. Alrighty, so uh, let's say you wanted to hide the title column. Uh, you could do that. First thing you got to do is make sure it's not required. Um, actually, in this instance, um, hold on, let's see here. Let's go to the list settings and we'll make sure. It, so it is required. Um, it'd be kind of silly not to make it required, but I'm just for giggles, I'm going to do this. Um, all right. So um, not required. So how do you hide it? You're going to fire off a new item. Go to edit form, edit columns. And you can deselect the ones that you don't want to show up and hit save. Now this doesn't affect the view, it just affects the new item. So there we go, now we have a new item without the title. Now you wouldn't want to do that for a song catalog. However, if a single line of text field doesn't do you any good in this list, uh, then you can, you can remove that. But I still say it just makes life easier if you use it. Um, just just use it now the uh, super secret tip that I wanted to show you first let me let me write the ship here okay that's gonna bug me if I don't fix that right about now so in review edit there we go boom oh we can also change the order so this is really super cool um, you know as title first artist one artist two sales etc all right, so there we go. That is how you hide a column from your end users in the data entry form. Now, super secret, bonus material. Bonus material, bonus. It looks like we got about five people watching. Hello, thanks for watching. This is Carolina Mike. You're watching SharePoint in 60 seconds. And uh, I just wanted to give something back, let y'all ask any SharePoint questions you have. If I'm able to answer it, I'll do it on the spot. If not, we'll try and point you in the right direction. So let us know, let us know. All right, the super secret thing. Uh, you might notice that I tend to use camel case when I am naming my columns. There is a method to the madness, and I'll show you exactly why I do that. Um, well, yeah. Uh, basically, this name is consistent throughout the coding of this list. Meaning, when you name it, you name it for good in the eyes of what's underneath. And here's what I mean. So let's say I go in here and I... Uh, go to column settings and I want to edit this column and I want to rename it from artist one to um, to artist one yeah rename it what why are you not letting me save I'm gonna go I'm gonna go the old school way here so artist one artist one oh choice column what I don't remember making it a choice column well, let's go single line of text I don't know what's going on what's going on here all right so yeah maybe that's okay here we go so artist one now I renamed it artist O N E my original name was artist one so if you take a look I can't really hover and do this at the same time but if you look at the bottom uh, left when I hover over that you'll see at the very end of that um, there is the list ID and then that's followed by uh, field equals artist one the original name 
And it's been my experience, unless this has been updated, it's been my experience that after I uh, try and do something different, like create a Power App based off of a list, the Power App is going to see the original name. So keep that in mind when you're renaming your columns. Um, something else I like to do is when I'm naming my columns, I like to, here, let's do this. Seriously. Um, I like to, what am I gonna do here? We're gonna do a choice field. We're gonna say approved. Um, that doesn't, let's see. Let's do prior approval. I like to do that. I like to uh, keep this uh, in camel case where I'm capitalizing the first character of each word and no spaces. Um, I like to keep that until the list goes live. So if, I, if I'm working on a list and I see that I've got column names that are all scrunched together, then I know that that is not ready for prime time. Um, you know, sometimes you may forget if you're in a rush trying to launch something, um, but you can easily go back in there once it's, you know, once it is uh, in there, then you can just fix the spacing just like that. I do the same thing with the names of the list as well. Notice how we've got the camel case here. So there you go. I'm checking. We've got three people watching it looks like. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and bring it home because.